There have been critics calling the president's rhetoric uh, reckless. We've heard that from a number of people here over the last uh, day. And this says he has tweeted um, earlier today, the president, about how the U.S. nuclear arsenal is now far stronger and more powerful than ever before. That was a tweet from earlier in the day. Let's spring in now from uh, the Fox News military analyst, the Colonel David Hunt, who, who joins us. And just to, uh, Colonel, continue that conversation. I'm sure you heard at least the, the latter part of it on this use of force and whether preemptive military action is on the table. What are the consequences of that to the point about whether we have any, quote, good options here? Yeah, let's understand a couple of things. We've been historically 40 years under the threat of nuclear attack from China and Russia. We, we'll get through this, okay, with, with, and with a lot more missiles than North Korea supposedly we have. But the, what's, what's happening is people are talking about preemptive strikes or, or decapitation as if they're going to be 100 percent successful with no repercussions. In all the war games we've ever done, uh, the, the, if we decide to do a preemptive strike, the North Koreans will get a six to eight minute warning. Six to eight minutes is enough for hundreds of thousands of rounds to go from 30 miles south of the demilitarized zone from North Korea. Right. The other thing is if we decide we're going to go on the ground, we have to move soldiers and we have to move Marines and aircraft. It's not going to be a secret. North Korea is not going to lay down. We would win the war. It's not an issue about who would win. We have the greatest military it's, we've ever had. It's phenomenal. However, the, the, the civilian consequences are, would be a million casualties plus in the first three or four days alone. Uh, that may be too much for anybody to swallow. So talking tough to me doesn't work as well as preparation. And my last point, we do not have a very good missile defense. It's shooting a bullet down with another bullet. And we're less than 50% on our tests. So, yeah, we've got to get on that if we're seriously going to do something. Because as hard as we want to hit North Korea, they get to punch back. So if they fire a missile, the point is we have about a, our chance of shooting it down is about half. Yeah, or less. And we don't have a lot of them. Our tests, this is very, very difficult technology to do. Um, and we, we certainly can do that. So what's the uh, least bad way, option then, a, by yeah. the way? So what's the least bad option if all of this is, uh, and you're not the only one saying this, a lot of experts have the same line of thinking. What's the least bad option available? There is no least bad option militarily. Anything militarily we want to do, there's a retaliation to Seoul. We got 28,000 soldiers there. The, the issue is, it's got to be, what do they want? How are you going to get them there? Okay, we, period. We've got to get, this has to be discussed. It talks. We've got very senior, very qualified former military and active duty military advising this government, mm -hmm. our government. These guys have been to war. They don't want to see it either. You're talking so about Mattis and McMaster the, and Kelly. That's what you did. All those. Of course. Uh, yeah. Now, what about of, the president himself? Of those guys are have you combat. confident in the president himself? I, don't, I think six months is too early to, too early to tell. I'm very confident in the three guys you just mentioned who all have serious combat and have led soldiers and bled. One of them lost his son in August 2010, Kelly. Right. I think it's, it's too soon to tell. This is a, the first real military crisis that the new administration has, and it's a big, it's a big test. Colonel Hunt, thank you, sir, uh, for your views, and uh, we'll talk to you again soon.